welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, I'm Lauren. In today's video, I'm going to be doing my updated 2023 luxury wish list. So I had posted this, I believe, back in January. At the beginning of the year, I had done my luxury wish list and <sighs> things have changed. <laughs> Um, I'm looking at it right now. I will also link it somewhere here on the screen. I'll put it down in the description box, but I had four bags um, the Gucci Aphrodite uh, the small in black um, Nope, not anymore and the oops, sorry the mulberry Alexa metallic in silver. I still really do love that. I think now in hindsight, I don't think I would get it in the silver. I think the Mulberry Alexa is a very classic shape. Um, so I think I would still like to get that eventually, although it's not high on my priority um, for my wish list. And then the Loewe Mini Dual Gate in either Mandarin or Ash Gray. I ended up seeing it in person, and while I still do really love the gate, um, I don't think the size, the mini, which I love the most, would suit me the best. I did just get my um, Patou La, Le Patou bag, which I think gives a similar kind of shape. Um, so right now, that one is also off my list. So the one handbag that is still on my wish list is the Goyard St. Louis GM in the green. I have wanted that for quite some time now. Um, here in Canada, we don't have any um, retail stores for Goyard, so I would have to travel. I would definitely get that the next time I travel, and hopefully, I'm hoping next spring break, we'll be able to go somewhere, my husband and I. So more so leaning towards minimal handbags and quiet luxury. I didn't even know that was the term back when I made that um, luxury wish list, but I know some people don't like it and they think, you know, quiet luxury is just a trend and it's going to be out and people are gonna love loud handbags again. Uh, I think personally as my style has evolved and as I've got older, I just don't really see myself going back towards a lot of loud um, like monogram prints. Um, and I know that the Goyard is a monogram, um, but here in Vancouver, while Goyard is popular, and I purchased my Goyard four years ago, I think now, or almost five years ago, so um, it wasn't as popular then. Same with my Loewe when I purchased it. There was barely any Loewe puzzle bags. I still don't see them very often at all. For every Goyard bag I see, I probably see 10 Louis Vuitton, and I'm gonna say it's gonna be a Neverfull. I always see the Neverfulls all over Vancouver, um, and I think you know people love them for good reason. It's just not my style, but um, here in Vancouver, BC, at least, maybe I just don't get out enough, but I don't see as many Goyard bags. So moving on to my current wish list, including the Goyard St. Louis tote in green in the GM size, I have three other handbags. They are fairly minimal. Again, my own personal preference, and this is what I am leaning towards, is more of a classic look that I can wear for years to come, whereas something like I how I've outgrown you know, my Speedy or my Louis Vuitton Noé in monogram. So looking at the first handbag I have, it is by Loewe. I have a love for Loewe. I don't have that many pieces. I have my puzzle tote. I have my tea pouch by them. I have another piece I'll be showing you next week that I just picked up. But in the past, I also got the Nano puzzle. I ended up returning that because it was a bit too small. And then I got the Mini um, at Christmas, actually, from Farfetch in the bright sort of orange. I ended up returning that, the puzzle. It was a small puzzle, but like with a thicker strap that said Loewe. I ended up returning that just because the orange was too bright. But I love Loewe. It is more expensive, so I think that is the number one reason why I'm not buying a lot of Loewe handbags. Um, they definitely are investment, but it is the Puzzle Faux Tote in shiny calfskin. It comes in a few different colors. I want it in the black just because um, I feel like when it comes to tote bags and if it marks easily because it is calfskin, you're not gonna be able to see it as much uh, on a black handbag. That's what I tend to find, my own experience. Um, but it, the Puzzle Fold Tote, uh, it says here, takes the iconic bag's signature geometric lines and reimagines them into graphic and architectural panels that allow the bag to fold completely flat. So it says it makes it perfect for travel, kind of like the Longchamp. 
Um, so on the website, you can actually see it folding down, which I think is amazing. It says it's supposed to be very soft and lightweight. I love Loewe leather as well. I feel like it just gets better with age. So I'm really excited um, to hopefully add this to my collection. Price point of this on the Loewe site, it is 27, well, essentially 28 hundred dollars so it is fairly expensive but I just I love the look of it the list index just ranked Loewe as the number one brand for quarter three it just means it's sort of like the most popular and more most sort of sought out and searched brand um, I'm really glad that Loewe is at number one because I feel like their pieces are like amazing quality so the second one is by Totem. I have mentioned it before. I have my um, Totem belt hobo. I love that. The leather on that is stunning. It is a grained leather and it's pebbled, which I don't tend to go towards. Um, I like kind of like the smooth calf skin, like my Loewe puzzle, but um, I've just been enamored. I like in love with this uh, hobo bag that I have. I said before that I feel like Totem could be like the next Loewe because I feel like the craftsmanship is there. The handbag that I really am looking towards is the Totem um, T-Lock Clutch in the color Milk. It is this most beautiful ivory color. I don't know if it's even ivory. It's like the color of milk. Um, and it has silver hardware, it's very minimal. You'll see it just has that little silver T on the front where the closure is. Uh, the really great thing about this too is that you can use it as a clutch, but it also comes with a uh, crossbody strap as well. So uh, it's just, it's so beautiful. The inside is um, micro suede. It has a little leather card slot. So they do also have this in a larger size, which I know is really popular. It's just the T-Lock. Well, I feel like this smaller clutch version would suit my lifestyle more because I don't carry a lot. Um, I also love that there are feet on the bottom. I really like that they took that into account so it can protect the leather. The strap is adjustable. Again, it's the silver hardware. Oh, it's just a really stunning bag. For the price point of it too, I feel like it's pretty good. It's uh, $1,250. I believe that this is Canadian. I'll have to double check. For the price and being an all leather handbag and then having that versatility to wear it as a clutch, but also having the adjustable strap, um, crossbody strap, I just think this would be such a great addition to my handbag collection. And then last but not least, I have one by The Row, and it is the large slouchy banana bag in black. I want the larger size. I know they have the small size, which is fairly popular. A lot of people like the smaller version of it, but I love the large version. I already have my Le Mer croissant bag, and, and I feel like that would be the equivalent to the small. I actually considered getting another one of the Le Mer bags, but um, the row is just, the slouchiness of this one is more so than the Le Mer. Um, I just like the silhouette of it a little bit more. I want the large size, like I said, because I already have that Le Mer one, but I also feel like it just makes it even slouchier because it's a bigger bag. Um, this one is by far the most expensive. So on the Le Mer, oh, sorry, the Row website, Canadian, it's um, $3,450, which I have never spent over, I think like $2,400 for a bag. My most expensive bag was my um, Goyard St. Louis tote that you can get it um, for cheaper on different sites. Like I'm looking on my Teresa and they have it for $27,000, um, uh, no, $2,794 Canadian. It is sold out. I just mentioned my Teresa and I think this is a good segue into the next topic of how do you know you're buying an authentic handbag when you're buying it from these sort of third party sites like My Teresa or Essence or Farfetch? And the answer is it's it's not always 100% safe. I feel like even if you were to get it from um, an actual store like Louis Vuitton, there's been a few articles, I will link them 
somewhere in the description and put them up here where you see people um, purchasing handbags from Louis Vuitton, from Gucci or wherever, um, the actual stores, and then returning the super fake handbags um, and they made a huge profit off of it. Obviously, a lot of them were caught, but you never know how many people are doing it. So you don't even know if you're when you go to Louis Vuitton if you're truly getting an authentic handbag, which is scary. So. Um, I would say do your due diligence, um, definitely check out um, the Better Business Bureau, um, see what the reviews are like. I like that Louisa Via Roma, they actually have like a little tag on it, so if you want to keep it, um, you can cut the tag off, but if you're going to return it, that tag has to stay on, that censored tag. So I think that's one way, but I think another way to prevent all these super fakes is for the luxury brands to go towards a digital way. Uh, to authenticate the handbag. So I know that a lot of them are going and using the, what are they, RFID. So my Jill Sander handbag has that. I think that the new Saint Laurent little wallet I got, it was either the wallet or my tote had that as well. So I think that that's also another way just getting it onto like a blockchain somehow. But before I end this video, I did want to sneak in a giveaway. Um, I don't ever like to announce it because I feel like there's some people that just like search up the word giveaway and then just watch the video for that. And I feel like so many of my subbies are always watching my videos and I really appreciate it. So my last one, it was the Louis Vuitton. Um, what was it again? The business card holder, I think that's what it was, that I gave away and I snuck that in. Um, Lynn ended up winning that one. So I'm going to be giving away some of my favorites. So a couple of videos ago, I did a current favorite. So I ended up repurchasing some duplicates to give out to you. So um, I have the first item is by Maria Black. It is actually this necklace I am wearing here which I love. It is so stunning. It's harder to see. If I put it against like my black shirt, you can see it more. I've been wearing it since I got it. Um, I got this one off Essence and it is the Mio Gold Chain. So I don't want to touch it, but it is, um, I believe 22 karat gold plated vermeil. It is so Stunning. It is so beautiful. I am including these earrings. I showed these. I got these off Amazon. A pair of the chunky hoops. So I'm gonna include that for you as well. And then this necklace that I'm wearing. So many people asked about it. This is also from Amazon. It came in a pack of four. So there's four there, and they're all different. So that will be included as well. I showed my favorite lip gloss, which is by Lawless. It is the Forget the Filler in the color Velvet. I ended up getting one for you. Again, it is in the color Velvet, my favorite. I got this off Sephora. And then the last thing is my mascara. I'm not wearing it right now because I do have on um, false lash extensions that I put on myself from Amazon, but it is the Kill Lash Super Proof Mascara in the Long Curling. Best, hands down, the best mascara, especially if you have really stubborn, short eyelashes that don't hurt a, hold a curl. This is the best. I've gotten my um, one of my best friends on it as well, and she even said it. She's like, I don't even need a primer when I use this because it just works so well. To enter, um, you will need an Instagram because that is the best way for me to contact you. So leave me a comment. You can either put something easy, coffee or tea, if you're a coffee or tea drinker. So oh, if you're both, you can write both. I don't care. Just leave either coffee or tea and then put your Instagram handle. Please don't put the at um, just because my filters are on and it will often not include those responses. So just put what your handle would be after the at. And um, yeah, I'll put all the rules in the description box. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate all the love and all the support. Let me know what you think about my current handbag wish list. Let me know if I should include anything on it. I will see you in my next video. Bye.